Hooty who all my stock market gamblers welcome today it's Monday I hope everybody had a great weekend markets are back open today they started off much higher we're coming back to the flat line right now now what's really going on in the markets well they're looking for direction we've had a nice 8% run up in the SPY and about 9% in the NASDAQ off of the lows and that's pretty good that's pretty good I think we can get up maybe to the 50 day moving average average in both of those we'll see I actually took all my long positions off today I no longer have any long positions on now I, I'm thinking about putting a short position on if we can get up to the 50 day moving averages now maybe we do that tomorrow and I'll put a short position on now what I'm expecting is for the market to retrace to consolidate to come back in and then move much higher than where we are right now I'm a trader I jump in and and out of the markets. Now there was this guy a long time ago named Fibonacci. Fibonacci was a mathematician and he discovered some patterns that happen in nature. And basically what his whole th thesis was is the retracement levels. There's what's called Fibonacci retracement levels. There's actually, well, there's several of them, but the main ones are 38%, 50%, and 62%. Okay, so if we've had a run-up, let's just take the SPY, for example. Let's say it ran up from like 380 to 420. Okay, let's say it had a 10% move, right? So 380 to 420, that's a 40-point move. Now, a Fibonacci retracement level of 50% would be a 20 dollar pullback 20 dollar pullback so we ran from 380 to 420 these are just rough numbers and then it comes back to 400 this is where i want to buy it at i like the 50 percent retracement that's what i look for in when you have this nice run up you know nine percent in the nasdaq that's a good move off the bottom i think we're going to give half of it back we've got gaps to fill we're going to come back down and fill those gaps before we move higher that's just my take on the market now yes we could go up to the the 50-day moving average first but we could pull back right here and fill that gap once those gaps are filled that's about where the 50-day retra 50 percent retracement is and that's where I will be buying into the market again now that's just my play that's my take on the market I think the recent lows are going to hold I think we're going to move higher but we you know an eight percent move is pretty good right off the bottom right and I think we're going to get a retracement and then move much higher all right so let's move on to the real estate market now over the weekend there was this well a new listing came on my street and they were having their first open house so I got there a little bit later I guess the open house was started about one o'clock I got there about 2 30 and you know I walk down my street and I walk into the open house I don't tell them I'm a real estate broker I if they know me then they they know but it's no big deal I just pretend like I'm a neighbor interested in their house maybe I got someone that wants to buy buy it. Well, what was interesting, there was nobody there but me and the real estate agent. Me and the other realtor, we had a little conversation. I asked him how the day was going. He said, not so good. You're the first one in. I'm the first one in. You've been open an hour and a half. Isn't this the first weekend at one? He goes, yeah, I just put it on the market. Well, where are all the people? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I go, well, what do you think's happening in the real estate market? Now, he was much younger than me, and he, you know, he was telling me, well, the real estate market's strong. He's going, someone's going to buy this because it's right next door to Apple Computer. You know, you could walk down the street and you'd be at Apple Computer main campus. And he thinks that Apple Computer people are going to buy his house from him. Well, Apple Computer's not making everybody go back to the office yet. So maybe, maybe they're going to buy the house, maybe not. But I go, well, now, you don't have any people people coming in here it looks like a ghost town around here right I mean this is your first open house for the, the property now yeah I go maybe your price too high and he goes no no I'm not priced too high Billy Bob down the street he got more than this so I'm expecting it to get bid up I'm thinking wow this guy you know either he hasn't been selling houses long or he's got a completely different opinion I told him I think oh, well, what if houses crash he goes there's no way they could crash around here not 
not in our area. The rest of the country, that could crash. But our area is going to stay up because we got Apple Computer. We got Google. We got Facebook. We got the jobs here. So we're going to stay up. Our area is not going to come down. I explained to him about the death cross, the death cross in Apple Computer. That's when the 50-day cross is below the 200-day. Apple Computer was a $3 trillion company six months ago. Now it's about $2.5 trillion. Already lost a half a trillion. Could it go lower? Could go much lower. But that's just my opinion. Now he thinks that his house is going to sell to someone that works at Apple. And it probably will. You know, I mean, a lot of people do work at Apple. And this is a very desirable area if you work at Apple because you could basically walk to work. All right. So anyways, maybe his house sells. Maybe it doesn't. But I thought it was fascinating. I go, well, do you think the market could crash? And he goes, no, the market's not going to crash. Maybe we're going to level off. We're going to level off according to him. Well, I hope he's right, but I don't think he's right at all. I, th I think we're going to get a big crash. Now, Now he's telling me, you know, it's different this time. Mike, and a lot of people tell me that. It's different this time. You know what I tell him? I go, you know what? You're right. It is different this time. The bubble's about two or three times as big, and it's looking for the pin that's going to pop it. I think the pin already hit it. I think it hit it when interest rates went from 3% to 5.5%. I mean, that just did it in a six-month period of time. Now, it's really fascinating to me that sales of homes are really, really depressed right now. And we're in the busy months. This is the busy month, May, June. Uh, these are the times that the buyers are out there, and people were telling me, you know, Mike, if we just had more inventory, we'd get a lot more sales. Well, the inventory is starting to come on the market. As a matter of fact, May was a record increase in inventory. Uh According to Realtor.com, 107,000 new listings came onto the marketplace in May. This was a record. As long as they've been recording this statistic, this there's never been more new listings coming on. Now, if I was a seller right now, I'd be getting a little bit of anxiety going, you know. I, I mean, what I'm seeing, let me tell you exactly what I'm seeing. I, I, when I look at the MLS, when I look in my area, I, I, I see these homes, they go on for sale. And then they go pending, meaning they go into contract with somebody. But then they come up for sale again like a week or two later. Now, what happens? Well, a person can no longer get the loan is what's happening. They go in to get the loan and they think that rates are still low. Well, they realize at 5.5%, they can't afford the house. They're not getting the loans to go through. So anyways, the house comes back onto the marketplace because it doesn't get closed. It goes from pending to, to on for sale again. Now, that's fascinating to me, right? Now, here's another interesting point. Okay, now in the last 90 days, the last 90 days, now let's think. Well, the last 90 days, the days on market, the days on market from the time you list to the time you sell the house has doubled. It used to be that many days. Now it's this many days. And that's just in the last 90 days. Once again, that is increasing at the fastest rate ever recorded. So the days on market have doubled in the last 90 days. So you put your house on the market. It doesn't sell in the first week. It doesn't sell in the second week. What happens? Well, you reduce the price. You reduce the price. And you're not happy about reducing the price because in your area, houses don't go down. And believe me, that Billy Bob, he got out and you didn't make it. Look it, we're not at the high anymore. I'm telling you, it has peaked. We're not at the high. The numbers are coming out. We just got some numbers for May and the number of new listings that are on there has never been greater. Uh, I mean, recorded 107,000 new listings in the month of May. That's wild, isn't it? Okay, so but we got this thing. What if houses do crash? What if they do crash? Uh, I mean, let's say they go down 50%. How long do I think it will take for them to recover? I don't think they're going to recover fast this time. I don't think the Federal Reserve can pump enough money into the market to make them dance back up to the levels that there are now. I think this is really about the last chance to get out. I mean, you can still get out right below where Billy Bob got out at, but the guy after you, he's going to get out a little bit lower, and the guy after that's going to get out even lower. It's a stair step down right now. Now, how long till they come back up to these levels? 
five, 10 years. That could be conservative. It could be as long as 20 or 25 years. I mean, do you realize during the Great Depression, now the Great Depression was what, uh, 1930, let's call it. And anyways, the Great Depression, the stock market was up here and it collapsed. It just crashed. I mean, 90% basically. How long did it take to go back up? It took 25 years to get back to that level. 25 years. Now, I'm afraid that something like that could happen in the housing market. Something like that could happen in the stock market where it takes 10, 20, 25 years just to get back to the levels that we're at now. Now, to me, that's scary. Now, if you're a seller out there, I don't mean to make you nervous, but I would start getting out as quickly as you can. And if that means reducing your price to find the buyer, <laughs> reduce your price. Look at 20 percent of homes right now on the market have already had one price reduction. In my area, the average price reduction is $93,000. $93,000 is a pretty considerable price reduction. Even on a $2 million home, that's still a nice chunk of change. And if you got to reduce it another ninety-three dollars to find that buyer, you might want to. This may be the last chance to get out. Now, why? Well, because the the buyers have gone on strike, basically. Look at that open house I was at the first weekend on. It was a ghost town. There's no buyers. No buyers. The buyers have gone on strike. And I don't think they're coming back anytime soon. If you're a seller, you're going to have some anxiety until you find that buyer. But I think you might have to reduce your price. That's just my opinion. I'm Tall Mike. If you like this stuff, give me the thumbs up. Why not? It's Monday. It's Monday. Let's see what the stock market does tomorrow. Very exciting. Very exciting. Bye-bye now. Have a great day, everybody.